It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to safely remain open as we continue to navigate COVID-19. We are following the same safety protocols we have been since the beginning and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we continue to ramp up. Production is up and now is the best time to get the Adafruit items you've been waiting for. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. Lady Ada is making final tests on the Adafruit Black Lives Matter board. Shown on Ask an Engineer and Top Secret, this board shows up as a USB flash drive when connected to a computer to hold files, pictures, and CircuitPython code. It has four edge-lit LEDs and four capacitive touchpads and the iconic symbol on the front. Common alkaline batteries power this board and it has a lanyard ring for wearing. Video available on YouTube. GHI Electronics has expanded their STM32H7 series to a Feather, Bit, Breakout, and TFT screen sporting portal. We recently added STM32X7 support to CircuitPython. It would be great to get these boards added. More information at ghielectronics.com and the Adafruit blog. Python reaches number two in Red Monk's language popularity rankings. These influential programming popularity rankings are based on GitHub and Stack Overflow data. Red Monk analyst Stephen O'Grady notes, Python is the first non-Java or JavaScript language ever to place in the top two of these rankings by itself, and would not have been the obvious choice for that distinction in years past. For more details, check out redmonk.com. Check out this adapter board for attaching a feather wing to a Raspberry Pi. Files available on GitHub. Python releases this week include, Python 3.8.5 was released as a security hotfix. Python 3.9.0 Beta 5, the last beta before 3.9.0, is also available. Check out details at blog.python.org. Geekmom Projects post to Twitter a self-contained edge-lit octahedron controlled by a Serpente M0 running circuit Python, including a wire broken out for use as a capacitive touch switch. The halves snap together with homemade magnetic connectors. The UTI-165 thermal camera Python example now works with Windows, thanks to whomever fixed the bug in OpenCV for Python. You can now grab frames from these thermal cameras on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Learn how from the UTI-165 thermal fever scanner camera guide in the Adafruit Learn system. In this week's CircuitPython deep dive livestream, Scott streamed his work on FPGA APIs and ESP32-S2 Wi-Fi scanning. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deepdive. CircuitPython Day is September 9th, 2020. Adafruit has chosen 9-9-2020 as the snakiest day of this year. We'll keep you posted on events and happenings to include a CircuitPython team livestream, collaboration with hardware and software folks, and highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. More information will be forthcoming. Do you have ideas or suggestions for CircuitPython Day? Are you planning your own CircuitPython Day event? Let us know via email at circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. Animal Crossing Nova Lite Time Helper, inspired by Animal Crossing New Horizons, powered by an Adafruit Feather M4, RTC, and NeoPixels using CircuitPython. Details available at charlin.codes. Caitlin's dad posts to Twitter an LED message scroller face shield. Add a real-time clock for face time. A Pi Portal Pint clock weather display using CircuitPython. An NTP-controlled clock and a weather station display on the screen. Details available on Reddit and code available on GitHub. Electronic Cats has announced the BAST Wi-Fi board based on the new ESP32-S2 processor. CircuitPython support is planned via version 6.0. More information available at electroniccats.com. In this week's episode of Microcontrollers with Kinger North, learn about using Trinket M0 with CircuitPython and Arduino. Video available on YouTube. M2M LoRaWAN posts to Twitter a LoRaWAN node with MicroPython and CircuitPython AHT10 temp and humidity sensor and a Maxi IoT LoRaWAN module. Learn about why you shouldn't remove your package from PyPI in this post on blog.ovalerio.net. Read about understanding and decoding a JPEG image file using Python in this tutorial available on yasub.me. Python Weekly posts to Twitter continuous documentation, hosting read the docs on GitHub pages. Full write-up available on tech.michaelaltfield.net. Real Python posts to Twitter, documenting Python code, a complete guide. 
You'll learn about the reasons that documenting your code is so important, the differences between commenting and documenting, and best practices for doc strings. Full course available on realpython.com. RealPython also posts to Twitter Python keywords in introduction. Python keywords are the fundamental building blocks of any Python program. By the end of the article, you'll be able to identify Python keywords, understand what each keyword is for, and work with the keywords programmatically using the keyword module. Full article available on realpython.com. Check out four powerful features that Python is still missing in this article on infoworld.com. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers and single-board computers continues to grow. There were four new boards added this week, including the Maker Diary M60 keyboard and the Scout Makes Azul. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are five new Python on hardware-related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Chase the LED and press the button using NeoPixels and CircuitPython. This project is inspired by the Cyclone LED chase games often found in arcades. The enclosure is 3D printed and snap fits together. Inside is an Adafruit feather, an arcade button, a rechargeable battery, and a slide switch. Build this arcade-inspired game by following this guide from Noah and Pedro. This mechanical keyboard is designed for typing one thing only, vote, perfect for responding to heated political debates on social media or simply reminding friends and strangers of the most important action they can take as citizens of a democratic society. Build a mini Cherry MX compatible keyboard in this guide from Colin Cunningham. Learn in Spanish everything there is to know about the Circuit Playground library for Circuit Playground Express and Bluefruit in this newly translated guide from Alvaro Figueroa. Learn how pressure can be used to calculate altitude and build an altimeter with your Adafruit clue in this guide from Carter Nelson. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 263. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, the bulk of Jeff's time has gone into a new guide which will cover both the SD card improvements in CircuitPython 6 as well as the new SD card breakout that supports SDIO. As part of this, Jeff has continued to prepare support for the SD card slot on the STM32F405 Feather, which requires SDIO. Other work includes pulling in updates to Microlab and investigating adding the LSB first mode to busio.spi. Lucian worked on implementing the NeoPixel and the Pulse In Pulse Out module on the ESP32-S2, diving into the RMT remote control peripheral. Espressive has a funny habit of naming their peripherals in a way that makes them sound kind of limited, when the truth is just the opposite. Just as the LED controller is actually an extremely flexible and general purpose PWM controller that is also suitable for servos and tones, the remote control peripheral is capable of far more than just IR pulse trains, such as emulating the NeoPixel protocol. He's currently considering whether he should implement a port-level mediator system for the RMT, since it's possible we may also want to use it for things like rotary I.O., in which case it would be good to have a similar channel negotiator system like the one he implemented on STM32. Over the weekend, he also took some time to play with the open book Featherwing from Oddly Specific Objects. He's always enjoyed playing with language learning software and hardware, and he saw an opportunity to do something along those lines with the OpenBook, which is a compact e-paper e-reader that runs on CircuitPython via the Feather M4 Express. The really cool thing about the OpenBook is that it has an NOR flash chip called Babel that is entirely dedicated to Unicode character support. This is useful since good international embedded fonts are kind of hard to find, and they have a hard time fitting on the Feather 2 megabyte NOR flash alongside CircuitPython. This is Lucian's flashcard app, which assembles random Japanese sentences from a JSON file full of cards and words, allowing you to make many variations on a particular sentence type. He's hoping to expand on it to include tags and SRS features. It's been really cool to see how easy it was to move a Python app designed on a PC over to CircuitPython. Melissa worked on the Matrix Portal library and wrote a couple of examples that will hopefully be used in future projects. One of the examples displayed a scrolling message of YouTube subscriber and view counts for a given channel. This was based on a similar project done on the Pi portal with some changes for the lower resolution. Another example displayed the current Bitcoin price. This one was pretty simple in that the library initialized the display in Wi-Fi connections and went out to the internet to get the price and display it. This was similar to another Pi portal example that did the same thing. She's still working on changing up the library so only certain components of it can be used and thus it will use less memory. The Linux Plumbers Conference for 2020 will be an online event taking place 24th through 28th of August. 
They are working hard to recreate as much of the feel of an in-person LPC as possible, and will be releasing details as they work them out. PyCon AU is holding PyCon Line AU September 4-6, through 6, 2020. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyGotham is a New York City-based eclectic Py-centric conference covering many topics. PyGotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020 with a single track of talks presented online. The call for proposals is now open at cfp.pygotham.tv. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project Weblate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for Weblate, or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 23,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.